My name is uh, Max Nee. I am a uh, software engineer at the New York Times. Um, one of my colleagues spoke yesterday, Leslie, uh, who gave the keynote, and then uh, Dave, who is one of the organizers, is also one of my colleagues. Um, so I don't know why we're all in Philadelphia, but it is what it is, right? So <clears throat> um, I'm going to talk today about continuously delivering the news. Um, so I'm not going to talk about, you know, old paper boy throwing the newspaper in your driveway. Not many people get their newspapers that way anymore. Uh, we're going to talk more about a software-driven approach. Um, so here we go. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the mission statement of the New York Times, which is something that um, I think is very powerful. Uh, we seek the truth and help people understand the world. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I work there. Um, it's a good mission to believe in, and it sort of helps drive what we do at the New York Times. So that being said, I'm going to talk a <clears throat> give a brief overview of what we offer at the New York Times. So obviously news is the biggest thing. Uh, we have games. How many people out there play Wordle? All right, got some uh, engagement there. Um, anybody play Connections? Yeah. How about Strands? All right. It's a new game. It's in a beta. You know, you, you can find it on our site. It's pretty exciting. Um, <clears throat> we also have Cooking, um, which is a big uh, driver of, of engagement with our products. Uh, Wire Cutter, uh, The Athletic. Um, actually, I'll Give a, uh, we did a big migration earlier this week of moving the athletics domain under NewYorkTimes.com, which was a big effort. It's pretty cool to happen. And then finally, audio, which is a newer product of ours, which is a lot of podcasts and audio reporting. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that we think we do is we are an application developer and we develop, right? We think we write code and we're building features all day. But in reality, um, what we actually do is we develop, we containerize, we provision infrastructure, build, test, deploy, route, monitor, right? This is kind of like the DevOps way, right? But a lot of this sometimes can get in the way of like how we operate, right? Like, you know, when you're an application developer, your goal is to build and write features and get them in front of customers, right? Not necessarily do some of the other things, uh, which can be distracting. Um, and one of the things is that given that, you know, you have a million options to containerize, you have a million clouds to choose from, right? These things, these choices can be very complicated and sometimes bog down actual development. Um, so a long time ago, actually before I joined the New York Times, um, we had many applications deployed to many clouds, um, and we had no real common tooling across the enterprise. Um, and we also had a fractured production uh, environment. So if you wanted to, you could use GKE, EKS, ECS, whatever, right? Um, but that caused a lot of issues in terms of, like, if there's an issue, if there's an outage, right? If news is deployed in GKE and audio is deployed in ECS, right? Like trying to debug those issues can be a lot harder than, you know, normal. So um, what, um, what I do and our team does on a regular basis is we're developing the common building blocks of how to um, simplify application development and remove a lot of those harder choices so developers can actually develop. So what we do, so we're building a tool, or we've built a tool, so we're limiting languages. So right now we choose between Go or TypeScript, uh, mostly React for the front end, and Go for our back end. Um, other languages can be used. We're not limiting people, so we offer sort of like a exit ramp to you know, choose uh, your tooling of choice. Um, so this kind of creates a lingua franca, a shared common language, so teams can easily communicate. So um, if you're on the games team and you're building your application and then like you have to go help out cooking or you get transferred to cooking, you're already familiar with Go and a lot of the common patterns that we use at the New York Times. Um, and on top of that, <clears throat> we've decided to have a shared runtime platform. So we chose Kubernetes as our shared runtime platform. Um, so it's one container uh, runtime to rule them all. Um, and, that, and, that, and that means that we have a shared infrastructure. So there's one team that's responsible for 
maintaining and uh, running Kubernetes, but that just lets teams deploy their applications there without having to like turn all the knobs, make all the decisions. Um, and I'll get into some of the more deep, some of the details a little bit uh, later. Um, so we went from this, right? Teams maintaining, maintaining and managing their own Kubernetes clusters sort of all over the place, um, which again, can be confusing, frustrating, um, a headache if you're, hey, I'm new here, where do I go, right? And you're like, oh, this team uses this, this team uses that, uh, and it's just how it was. Um, but now we go to this. Um, so we have feature teams that deploy applications to our shared uh, clusters, and then we have one team that sort of owns and manages all of those clusters. Um, and it makes you know, debugging a lot easier. It makes teams a lot happier because they don't have to like think too hard, right? They can just focus on building. Um, <clears throat> so part of the shift is we've introduced um, GitOps principles. Um, so GitOps is an operational framework that uses Git as a single source of truth to manage infrastructure and application deployments. So with, within their application code, we have their declarative configuration. In this case, it's Kubernetes manifests. They commit them, uh, the changes get pulled. We use Argo CD as our um, GitOps tool. Um, and then that syncs their status to Kubernetes. So, you know, when teams merge, their code gets, essentially can go to production without any extra button pressing, right? It's, it's there, there's no sort of other changes. Um, and Argo has been really helpful. It also helps teams not have to like worry about signing into, you know, kubectl and like debugging things. You can actually look at your pod logs in Argo CD, which is actually really handy. Um, if you haven't seen it or used it, I check it out. It's pretty interesting. Um, so we now have these common building blocks, right? We have shared deployment platform, Argo CD, and that allows us to sort of um, abstract away other common tooling, right? So we've built this tool. Um, so observability is baked in, secrets management is baked in, artifact management is baked in, and network management. Um, networking probably at every company is really hard. At the New York Times, it's even harder. Um, so we, you know, we want to make sure that people can go to NewYorkTimes.com and not have any issues. Um, <clears throat> so we have a pretty robust network, but it's also complicated. Um, so this is what we enable, right? Um, we now allow teams to just do the application development and not have to worry about all those other things that we kind of that I kind of went over. Um, and I think it's it's helpful, and there's a lot of good feedback that we received, um, and it's it's pretty exciting to like have more and more teams on board to our platform and our tooling, um, and give this like simple on-ramp, right? So like this is when you're bootstrapping a new application, right? These are the choices you're faced with, right? You're like, oh, where do I go, right? Am I gonna get stuck in traffic? Um, like, what do I use to do X, Y, and Z? Like, what tool do I use to deploy? Where am I gonna deploy it to? You know, it's very confusing and um, what, uh, our team uh, uh, enables is, you know, a paved path, right? So um, you basically, uh, we, we have a form that bootstraps your GitHub repo, um, all your pipelines, sets up your container management, so it deploys your artifacts to ECS, sets up all your stuff in our, uh, we use Vault for security management or secrets management, so like it handles all of that for you and it's provisioned and then it just lets you do the work that you need to do. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, it's one click app application creation. So it removes the bootstrapping of a new app. We give you the building blocks to get started. Um, and we add some sensible defaults to some of your Kubernetes manifests. But again, you're allowed to change those as needed um, given you know, the application needs. Uh, we allow ephemeral environments for pull requests. So if you want to test things, you don't have to, you know, work to add extra Terraform or whatever to your application or your code or your pull request. You can just Argo CD automatically deploys it. So 
This lets, um, it's faster to letting developers do development. So we lower the barriers, uh, we have happier teams, and then we have better products. Um, and then um, we have, uh, this is sort of continuing um, sort of where we're going with our tooling. So we have a few golden uh, paths. We um, recently added mono repo support. Um, we have a few applications at the New York Times that are pretty massive mono repos. Um, and then we're opening our templating to allow more golden paths. So there are still uh, job applications at the New York Times. Uh, there was a PHP application still running up until a few weeks ago. Um, so we want to make sure that we can encompass everybody. This was just a first, you know, step in that direction. Um, and then uh, I also want to talk about we've been retrofitting existing applications. Um, so it, it is achievable. It's not perfect yet because they're sort of opinionated in the way that they do things. Um, and we have to sort of modify how we onboard them to our tooling. Um, but overall, it's been uh, a pretty good success. Uh, we removed the tech debt and operational overhead from those sort of older projects. And then also this helps us gain trust across the organization. So we meet teams where they are. So they're like, we want to use your shared infrastructure. How do we get there? And we offer, you know, we work with them to make sure that those goals are achievable. Um, an example is... NewYorkTimes.com uh, is a massive mono repo, which was deployed in uh, GKE up until about a month ago, where we actually ran them through this process and we migrated them to our shared um, Kubernetes uh, infrastructure with zero downtime, which was a pretty big achievement across the company. Um, there was lots of people involved, but it's pretty impressive to see that you know, this idea works. Um, and then the future. So we use Argo CD. Um, Argo CD has a lot of neat features, including they have a project called Argo Rollouts, which ties into Argo CD, which allows you to do pr progressive delivery. So um, you can do Canary with metric analysis. They have a templating um, that you can use. And then uh, Blue Green Deployments, um, which is pretty, and it has like a nice UI on top of that. Um, and then we want to do bring your own templates. So, you know, if you don't want to use Go, if you want to use something else, we want to make sure that uh, you can use our tooling because we want to help you. And then finally, bring your own uh, extra infrastructure. So, um, you know, databases, lambdas, queues, um, some of that stuff is harder to, obviously we don't all want all of that running in Kubernetes because of stateful sets and whatever else. Um, but to have some of that live outside and connect in, um, we're working to make that a lot easier for teams. Um, so that is the end of my uh, talk. Um, any questions? Hi. So um, I have two questions, if I may. Uh, one is uh, you, so acknowledging that NewYorkTimes.com is a busy website, you said that networking is complex for you, and I'm wondering why that is. Uh, so we have uh, CDN fronting our, our infrastructure, um, but things kind of are segmented across. Uh, so, um, and plus routing the traffic to the right things. Uh, we've built our own sort of Kubernetes routing operator um, that helps route that traffic. Uh, I'm a few levels away from the networking. I just know that it's hard. Like why can't things be easier? But I think everybody says that about networking. And my second question was, um, do you struggle with, it, it sounds like you, you run everything out of a, sh a single shared cluster, if I understood you right. Do you struggle with upgrading that cluster without downtime? Um, so I'm not specifically responsible for the Kubernetes part, but um, they do work to stay up to LTS in terms of, we use EKS. So we haven't had any downtime upgrading, so. Uh, I think we try to plan in advance and make sure that things go smoothly. So, but I think we've been running it for a year and a half with zero uh, interruptions upgrading. Since Max and I said we work together, I can I can also try to answer the question. There is sandbox dev and stage clusters, so they upgrades are done in some of these other places before they're done in prod. But like Max said, there hasn't been any any issues, and we're sort of close closely up to date with whatever the latest Kubernetes is. 
Um, we're also using EKS, so that makes it a little bit easier. It's not like bare metal. I'm, I'm not, oops, I grab. I was going to say I'm closer, but I'll, if you want to grab, take it. Uh, so th these are all, um, uh, from my understanding, these were all sort of live services-based deployments. Uh, what are you What are you guys doing and, and tooling-wise in terms of background processing, asynchronous work, either doing you know ML model training or ML batch inference? What are you using for that? Is your group responsible, or is that? So we have a data platforms team that's mostly responsible for a lot of that. Um, <clears throat> on, are they also um, Kubernetes based? I'm just curious. Uh, yes and no. Uh, there are still some teams using GKE and uh, what is it? Cloud Run. Um, but a lot of the data stuff is done in BigQuery. No other questions? Um, so I have just one more slide here uh, some from some of my coworkers uh, who have given talks about what we've worked on. Happy to share these. These are all YouTube links um, given at uh, KubeCons and Argo, Argo Cons um, in the past couple of years. Uh, so uh, thanks, everybody.